Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Bible study and we are in the book of Hebrews today as that was the most popular result on the poll that we posted in the community tab so that's what we're going to start with and very happy to be back thank you for joining me in this study. Now, the author is unknown of Hebrews but it's a message to Jewish Christians who were familiar with the old covenant and they were also enduring lots of prosecution as well. And these people at the time, because of this persecution, were unwilling to grow spiritually and were risking forfeiting the blessings that Yah has had in store for them. And so this is a message to them to keep going and that following Christ is worth it. And so this book is all about how Jesus is superior to the Old Testament sacrificial system and that following Jesus is worth it it. So let's get right into it. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. So this is beginning by explaining how God spoke to the fathers of the faith a long time ago. The commentary says here, God is unknowable unless he reveals himself. And that's what they're saying he's done here. The Bible is God's revelation to us. And obviously in the past he communicated in different ways through prophets and angels and animals even, and now we have this precious word. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And so before, we see he was speaking through prophets and other things, and now he has spoken to us through his Son, Jesus. And the New Testament days, these last days, is basically everything from Christ being born into the world and his second coming. So we are now in the New Testament days, so this is relevant to us as well. So Jesus is his son and he's the incarnate revelation of God himself. He is God's final word on everything. He is the heir of all things. He is the creative power of God. God made the universe through Jesus. He spoke the world into existence through his word, Jesus. So Jesus is God. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So Jesus the Son is also the brightness of his glory. He is the express image of his person. Jesus is the image of God. He is fully divine. He cannot be the exact expression of God without being God himself. It's not the same as we are made in his image like we are, that's very different. Jesus is the express image of his person. And he, there's no way to be the exact expression of God without being God. We are not the exact expression of God. We are made in his image. It is very different to being the express image. And so Christ purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. My commentary explains it as when the high priest entered the most holy place in the temple to offer sacrifice for the sins, there was nowhere to sit down because his work was never done, so he was constantly going back over and over and over. Whereas when Jesus died on the cross, he was able to finish the work. The debt was paid in full. And when he was resurrected, that work was complete and he, was, he sat down on the right hand of God in authority and power. All right, let's keep going being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Jesus is obviously much more superior to the angels. The commentaries kind of put this all into perspective. He said, God made humans lower than the angels, but he crowned them with glory and honor. And he made humans to rule the earth and manifest God's rule in history. But when Adam sinned, he rebelled against God's rule and so Satan became a god of the age, and the world needs claiming back. So who could claim it? It had to be a human. That was God's plan from the beginning. But sinful humans were under the authority of the devil, 
And so the only one who could save us is the last Adam, Jesus. He was perfect, perfectly righteous. He was not under Satan's authority, but he had to become human in order to be the ultimate sacrifice to save us from Satan. Jesus is the son. He is both the son of God, the son of man. He is both divine and he's both human. For unto which the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture thou shalt fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And so all this passage now is reaffirming that Christ is superior to the angels. According to the commentary, it says, Many first century Jewish Christians revered angels because they were means of divine revelation. But it says here, But God never said to my angels, You were my son. Angels don't have the right to receive worship. Only God can do that. And in fact, all God's angels worship the Son, as it said here. All the angels worship him. So angels are not above Jesus. And not only that, but God calls the Son God. He says, unto the Son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So God himself calls the Son God. And unlike the rest of the world, Jesus continually loved righteousness and he hated lawlessness. He is the everlasting creator of the heavens. And he's always been seated at God's right hand with the enemies under his feet. Angels are just spirits who serve those who are going to inherit salvation, i.e. us. Angels serve us, the saved. So the commentary is saying here, Christ himself had to inherit a name even though he was an appointed heir. We are heirs by grace. However, our participation with Christ determines the, the benefits and privileges that we get in the kingdom. So while our salvation isn't going to be lost, if we are truly saved, that is, we still can earn great rewards in heaven through our works here because their works are a demonstration of our faith, but it's not affecting our salvation. So there we go, what an amazing start to Hebrews and a wonderful explanation how Jesus is God. So let's summarize what we've read. So God has spoken through his son and we know his son is God's word. So that's all, it all fits in together so beautifully. And he has revealed himself in the past through prophets, through angel of the Lord, and now he's revealed himself through his word, the Bible. And of course, ultimately through Jesus Christ, who is his word, as we've already said, his word, this is his word, his word is Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus, everything was made through Jesus, his word. Obviously God spoke the word into exist, the world into existence. Jesus is the word. And Jesus is the brightness of his glory. He is the express image of his person. And he is the one who purged our sins and is now sitting on the right hand in heaven. And God had to become man to save us because our sin led us to be under Satan's rule, basically. And the only way we can beat that is through the blood sacrifice of the perfect spotless lamb, and that is through Jesus. And the angels are significantly inferior to Jesus, and that 
had to be taught to the early Jewish Christians because they really had angels as high regard because they had been messengers of God, I suppose. But he's, he's trying to say here, no, Jesus is who we need to be following now. Jesus is who we need to be putting in much higher esteem because he is God. God never said to the angels, you are my son, I have begotten thee. And in fact, all the angels worship him. And God calls his, calls his son God here as well. Unto the son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Jesus is eternal. He lives forever. He is God. Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity. No man on earth can say that, that he never sinned aside from Jesus, who is fully man and fully God. Everything will fade away but Jesus. Jesus lives forever. Angels are simply sent to serve those saved through Jesus, those saved believers. So there we go. Wonderful start to Hebrews and excellent affirmation and confirmation that Jesus is God and he's the one who should, we should be following. He's the one who saved our sins. He is God manifest in the flesh, came down as a man to die for our sins and he lives forever now and forevermore. So thank you for joining me. Please do leave any thoughts, takeaways and comments you've got in the section below. I love reading your comments. It means so much to me that you take the effort to write something and I remember everyone who does. So thank you so much for your engagement. Remember Jesus loves you so much. Lord willing, I'll speak to you really soon and until then, have a blessed day. Bye. Jewish. Um, okay, let's actually make a note of what I said before. Let's highlight some things. Don't know if I want to keep that bit in. Probably 